you know, another, another, another tough Monday, um, another tough Sunday, and a tough Saturday down in Atlanta, as you guys know. Um, played a good football team down there, well coached. Have a lot of respect for Paul Johnson and what he does as a program, their s schemes and what they do. Um, you know, good football coach and been doing it a long time. So uh, um, that's the first time they've gotten us in, in three years. So, uh, you know, ch chalk one up for them. Uh, uh, nice job. And we'll keep going back to the drawing board on, on everything we did there. Um, but, uh, you know, moving on to the next one, you know, obviously we've got you know, a Rice football team coming in here that's. Uh, you know, a, a one and three team like we are uh, coming off a tough uh, loss to FIU and they've, they've beat UTEP. They've lost to uh, Stanford and, uh, and one other, uh, Houston, I guess, and, you know, good Houston team that's athletic. So they've had a tough schedule as well. Uh, coach Bailiff is a, um, you know, a great football coach. I don't know him personally, but I've heard a lot of great things anybody's ever worked for him, loves him. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to having them come up here and, and rebounding. So. That'll open up for questions. Ben said after the game that you told him he's still the guy, he's still going to be starting. Uh, just, is everyone on the same page there? Is that what you expressed to him and Max the past couple of days? You know what? No, not really. Um, you know, to be honest with you, you know, I saw him coming in right as I was walking out. I think he was the next one up, and I just said, "Hey, you know, going with confidence, you're still our guy." And he's still one of our guys. We got two of them. We like. Um, and I thought Max did some great things when he was in there too. Um, and, you know, I thought Ben did some nice things. I mean, you look at the opening drive Ben took down the field. If you do that three or four or five times, I'd feel pretty good. You know, when we have eight three and outs, I don't feel very good. You know, we get a turnover at the 34-yard line. We gain one yard and three downs and kick a 50-yarder and miss it. It doesn't make you feel real good. So there's some things that need to be better. It was our worst performance rushing the ball. And, you know, I've talked about making decisions in the pass game and decisions in the run game. They're both, you know, they're both big things, and you know, obviously Ben can make plays with his feet. He scrambles around and and uh, and does a lot of things. But he's still got a lot of you know uh, room for improvement, as well does Max. So we're still searching. It'll be a work in progress this week, and we'll see what happens. But you know, that was kind of an after the game, feeling good about the first drive, um, and uh, I want to make sure you know he went in with confidence with you guys, so you guys didn't get after him. Um, and uh, you know, but when you watch the tape, there's a lot of things that we can, we have to work on. How, how difficult, you mentioned you know, the tough day of running the ball, <laughs> isn't it a, a byproduct of the fact that people just do not fear you guys vertically at all? They can, they can bring eight guys to the line? And yeah, yeah, it might, it might be, you know. Um, we've, uh, we've got to, you know, get it deep and, and, you know, people are playing us a little bit different, at least, you know, on gesture side and, and, uh, and we don't help ourselves with some of the techniques and fundamentals we use um, at the receiver position, so it's got to clean up. Was it still the case where Ben was kind of staring down receivers at times when you went back and watched the film? What did you there were some. There were some times. I mean, what'd you see? I mean, there were some times you see that one tip ball early. You know, the guy fades right into it because he looks over there, and you know, it's a, probably a completion if you if you keep your eyes where it needs to be. So there's little things, polish, and you know, things that you know you certainly can work on and get better at. But you got to do it every day, and you have to go out in the game and prove that you learned something. And that's probably the most disappointing thing is just watching the improvement week to week is not as much as you'd like to see. And I know it's not game one to game two. You know, it's game three to four or two to three, and you just want to see more improvement of a younger team. Do you challenge Jester at all? I mean, you talk about technique a little bit. I mean, he has seemed to have some troubles. Jester really challenges around. himself. You know, I don't know if he needs me in his head. Um, you know, receivers can be like kickers, too, um, you know. And everybody can be like kickers. Coaches can be like kickers. Reporters can be like kickers. Um, you know, some people got thin skin and thick skin. Jester's hard on himself. He cares. And, um, you know, um, just seeing some different things, it's probably frustrated him. He needs to get out of that and play loose and go. And we'll, we'll, we'll you know, address it again this week. Could it be wide open competition between Ben and Max this week? I believe so, yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to talk as a staff here. You're late. Uh, we're going to talk as a staff, you know, this afternoon, just kind of figure out where we are. You know, I think it's also based on what you're seeing, what you're, you know, what are they doing defensively? Who, you know, what's our game plan? I mean, I think it, uh, it comes down to a, a game plan as far as who they are defensively as we break them down, and what's our best matchup against what they do. Speaking of the game plan, I mean, other than the early touchdown quadri, it didn't seem like Ben was looking downfield that much. Was that more him, or was that more sort of what Sean's telling him to look for in the past game? Well, I think he's, he's supposed to go through his progressions and, and key what he's supposed to key. And sometimes you look there and sometimes you don't. And that's you know, maybe a little bit of the problem, too. You know, I'll leave it at that. Paul Johnson made some comments after the game about your 
technique on defense, some things you guys do. I don't know if you heard about it. I guess what you're if we did, we didn't do it very good on the dive. I guarantee you that. But some things we did. You kind of alluded to the fact that you guys might play. Was it dirty, Jerry? How would you describe it? Dangerous. You said dangerous. dangerous. Uh, he said he I said dangerous on a radio show. You said your defensive yeah. line would hold the offensive line. Yeah, that's dangerous. Okay. And then they make some more dangerous. Hey, we're locked into we're locked into rice. Um, you know, just look at the tape. We'll look, we're, we're focused on rice. That's a, that's water under the bridge. Appreciate you letting me know that. Henry Miller, the linebacker. Is that a, a, just a, you know? Are you allowed two team? questions in a row? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Henry Miller. We'll give him that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, Henry Miller moved to linebacker is something that. Uh, you know, we made last week, um, and uh, we're slowly transitioning them to that spot. And you know, again, you say, why? You know, just try to move guys around where we think they can best help this football team. And I think that guy can be a great outside linebacker. I think, you know, he could be the future star. As big and strong as he is, we need, need to coach him up. And, and one of the big reasons, Lance, was um, is that, uh, you know, with the return of some guys, whether it was Theron coming back and DeMar coming back, it was just like he was caught in a log jam back there mentally uh, of being a guy that you know was going to be seriously considered to get on the field and I was like he's too good a player we got to you know we got to move him up which is kind of my evolution you know coach Conklin's evolution of kind of how we like to move and get speed on the field that's what happened to Sean was a, a safety that would never play for us on the hash and he's playing some pretty productive football for us uh, at that star position so it's a hybrid DB slash linebacker position versus all the spread stuff we see and he does a nice job Good. Keeping with the linebackers, uh, you mentioned Saturday after the game that you guys got Elias Reynolds in there at the end, but I was just wondering why we didn't see more Chase Pine, I guess, behind Braybo. Chase Pine came in for a play. You didn't see him? Well, no, but you said you didn't have anyone else to put in there at the end, so you put yeah. in Yeah. So, Jerry, tell him why. I'm not talking about Chase Pine. Oh, uh, so that's why? <laughs> okay. But, uh, but I think he's going to be okay anyway. I so. The I word, Coach? The, the I word. <laughs> so he got a little dig he got dinged up a little bit and you know, it is what it is. He played I think eleven plays on special teams, but you know, but he was the guy. You know, he was the guy that got all the reps at that position and then we had to move to the third guy, which was not good. Which which O line did you like better? Books or tackle or books or guard? Is that a real question? <laughs> I like Bookser when he's on the field. Matter of fact, we're gonna, we're, we're sending him over to the school of medicine, find out if we can clone Bookser. Okay, um, Bookser's playing well, um, and he was productive at guard and tackle. Um, I like the combination with whoever is next to him is playing really good. That's a combination I like. Whoever that little guy is going to be the key, and that's what we're looking for. Get some consistency and and uh, at that other spot. Now, you, you, you talked about one of the things you like about your job is you get to coach the coaches. I'm curious though, when you've got one side of the ball that's particular that's struggling, it's been a few weeks now for the offense. You, you go with Sean. You spend. I do, I do. Time. You know, maybe I'm gonna spend less. Maybe I'm messing them all up in there. You know, um, you know, I give my thoughts on what's, you know, what I see. Try to look at their self scout things that a defensive guy could help them out with. I don't go in there and try to mess with schemes. Um, but the, the main thing is, I look and say, hey, you know, how's it back aligned? You, you know, have you done anything out of this? You know, those, those type of suggestions without, you know, there's nothing worse than someone coming in that doesn't know what they're talking about on that side. Now, I can talk fundamentals, okay, and I can talk technique and, and you know, what looks like a play action pass and what looks like pass, not play action. And I can talk about run fundamentals and playing with leverage and knocking someone off the ball. And those are things I'll focus more on. You know, their plays are their plays. How do we make the plays better is, is you know, which is the fundamentals. And that's coaching, that's making sure you know, your individual periods, your team takeoff periods, um, you know, match what we're doing out there. And obviously, you know, sometimes you guys are out there for that little team takeoff we have where we're throwing screens, for example. Okay, you guys out there for that period usually? We throw some screens. But we're throwing screens on air, and it's just to get those guys there. But, you know, in the game, we haven't executed our screens very well. So I've said, hey, if we're going to run some screens, we're going to do it against real people this week. We'll go exchange and... And so those are the coaching the coaches like, hey, guys, it, you know, they're, they're struggling with having guys in front of them instead of just, you know, it seems simple uh, concept, but not good enough. So we got to do something to fix that. So it's really what you practice every day. So those are little things that, you know, and there's more than that, but little things that you try to look for as a coach. Along the same lines, are you going to try and get more creative with the offensive play calling this week? There are a lot of three and outs and stuff like that. So you're going to try and spare some offensive events and look for that? Yeah, I mean, you can, you can do that if, you, if you'd like to. 
um, you know, is, is more better is a question. I'd like him. To, I'd like to see him get the stuff. We've got a pretty lengthy, you know, playbook, and every week you, you pick stuff that you like. Um, but it comes down to execution. So the more stuff you throw in, you know, it's like playing flag football. If you got 10, 10, you know, things on your wristband and, and you're bad at all of them, it's not very good. So more is not always better. You know, it's it's quality of what you have in. And right now, we're trying to master the quality of knowing who to block. So you may even see the game plan go slimmer, okay? So we can get good at what we're doing. How did you like the? Uh, That's how I like to do it. How did you like the whitehead handle combination? The whitehead combination. You know, we didn't put them out there together to. to you talking because they were on the same side together? Um, or you mean the safety? Take, I mean like a corner safety or I mean they lined up and they were in the game together but what like we try to put them together but uh, yeah both safety you know I like when number nine's out there I can tell you that DeMar had a good game you know he had one missed tackle which young guy um, and it was an easier tackle on you know the quarterback when he spun on him had a you know heck of a move by uh, Taekwon but uh, DeMar's getting better every week and he's aggressive he's tough uh, I don't know if you noticed his block on that on the punt return for a touchdown but uh, he's he's physical too I mean for a guy that has not played a lot of football here, he's a football player, and, and I like what I see out of him and what I saw in Whitehead Saturday. Uh, another guy who was blocking on the punt return a couple of times was Thomas McVitie. Um, How about that? Sort of doing, doing How about that? Balls. Let's talk about Thomas McVitie. No, that's great. You know, Thomas is a guy that we've been working in. Matter of fact, I think you guys mentioned it back in camp a long time ago. I don't know why I remember what you guys say, but uh, about being a personal protector on the punt team. So we've. You know, he's just such a good athlete. He's athletic. He can do a lot of different things. So we've moved him into special teams, and, and he's liking it. He sits in special teams meetings with a smile on his face, and, and uh, he, you know, he's taking that as a role to get on the field and make an impact. And it was great to have, you know, a lot of those guys. I mean, one of the other key blocks was uh, Pinnock's block at the, at the very end where it was a physical block. I mean, it was not an easy block. But he, he, he laid somebody. I don't know what number he was or, you know, maybe he was a freshman too. But uh, he had a great block to spring the final part of that run. Is that an indication that McVitie might move somewhere at some point in time? No, I don't think so. No, it's just he's still still a baby and, you know, not at all. How valuable is George asked them what you guys do offensively? How do they change your personnel factors? Yeah, he's, he's uh, extremely valuable. And, uh, you know, I gave you a little bit of hint last week, I guess, and said he was probable and, and he's more than probable this week. I mean, there's not a guy. I mean, I love this football team. You know, win or lose, you love these guys. You coach every day. And, you, and, they, and they grow on you. But George is a not only a good football player, but he's a he's a intense, brings it every day. And you, you should have seen the the sweat he was in pregame. Coach, I'm ready. You're the last guy, you know, that has to okay me to go. And I'm like, you know, because he looked okay last week, but not great. But he's he's gotten better every day. I mean, he got better sitting in a hotel room on Friday night. Um, he's a difference maker for us. Not only. Um, you know, as a football player, but emotionally in the huddle, I think he'll add some intensity that maybe we're lacking. And you need those guys in the huddle. And he's a he's a guy that's going to make a difference for sure. Yeah, we're kind of broadening out a little bit. We look at some of the results on Saturday. I mean, NC State goes to Tallahassee and wins. BC takes Clemson. I mean, makes them really kind of work for it on the road. Does it? Syracuse takes LSU to the wire. Right. I mean, when you look at the league, does it maybe speak to? I know it's we're still a little early, but this thing could be maybe even more wide open than, than normal. And so maybe one loss isn't the isn't the end of the world. Well, I, I, don't th I think that's always the case. And one loss, you know, I'm not worried about one loss. I'm worried about one win each week. And uh, you know, we we didn't help ourselves Saturday with execution and, and, and whatever. Um, but it's you know, we're just focused on the next game. Uh, to get into two and three, and then and then head into the ACC again. But uh, you know, not worried about uh, you know one loss or two loss. I think our guys know it's you know it could be you know the Coastal Champion could have two losses. Who knows? I mean, you just don't know what's going to be. It's too early. It's one game into the ACC. If you think all the hopes are shot, then you know you haven't been around college football long enough to know that there's a lot of good teams and anything can happen any given weekend. Does that, does that catch your eye, though, when you see? Catches my eye how you know how good the ACC is. Period. You know, I mean, you talk about from top to bottom. Um, you know, it's a it's a darn good conference, and um, you know, I think it's the best in the country. And you, and you keep watching some of these other teams play, and you watch a you know state go down to Tallahassee and do that. I mean, it opens up your eyes. You watch Syracuse go down to LSU. Maybe even more impressive what you know he's done up there. Dino uh, has done with that football team and, and, and taking LSU to the wire as well. Do you see any of the other results Saturday? 
stayed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I look. I gotta, I gotta find out what's going on because I gotta vote for that uh, coach's poll. So. Weaver did well. Weaver had a great week of practice. You know, Weaver was better equipped, I guess, for the option. Just you know, it was you know a different type of game. And he keeps Weaver. You know, as far as I'm concerned, Weaver's a starter. You know, as well as Allen Edwards. Allen Edwards just wasn't as good with the option, and, and the little things you know uh, that you had to do to get your hands on the tackle and um, you know some of the, uh, some of those things. So Weaver did a nice job and played played really good. They are. I mean, you know, I think they battled every week, to be honest with you. But, you know, just some things that we, you know, that we did in there that, you know, wasn't good enough. And, um, you know, there's competition makes everybody better. And, you know, Dantino's a good football player, too. So we're just going to play who practices better, who's doing the little things right. I think that when I asked you last week, how does the team respond when it, from a, to a lopsided loss? And you said, well, we'll find out. It's, it's a young team. We'll find out. What did you, you know, it, it wasn't. As decisive uh, this week in the office. Not even close to decisive. Right. Well, no. I mean, did you see a response? I, mean, I did. I, our kids were locked in, and I told them that on Thursday and Friday, um, even you know our, our Saturday or our, our Saturday meetings. I mean, they were just a, it was a little different attitude to them, and you know we talk a lot about attitude. And I thought, you know, I mean, you can look at me. Special teams wise, I thought we played a darn good game. You, know, you played good enough to win. Not just, you know, if you go back and look at those punt returns, we're one block away from scoring another two. You know, I thought our special teams played well uh, overall. I mean, you know, you know, I guess you could yell at, would you, uh, at Winslow for kicking him out of the end zone, you know, um, just because he's booming them. You know, so we got to practice now his, you know, 60 yards away from the, the end zone. You know, you can't just hit it like you did because you're now cranking the ball better than you ever have. So we got to do a better job as coaches of getting him in that range and practice when we practice punt and making sure that he doesn't do that um, because he's now got that leg and he's, he's, his operation is so perfect right now. Um, so I was happy with special teams. Defensively, you know, I think, you know, like I say, anytime there's a, a loss, you look at the coaches. They did a nice job. They did some different things on the dive, okay? I think someone asked me about the toss play early, right? Someone like last Thursday or Friday, whatever day we talked, said about the toss play. We, we, we crushed the toss. But that's what they do. They do a great job coaching. Like I said, Paul Johnson does a great job. And, you know, we, got, we took the toss away, but then they did some different things on the dive. So next year we'll try to take what they took, you know, what they did, and then he'll have something else that he'll pull out of his bag of tricks. And, um, again, we made some adjustments in the second half to get it, and we missed a couple tackles here and there and, and get worn out, to be honest with you. We were on the field way too long, and that's what's going to happen. But when you look at the execution of it, um, you know, it was, there was some good stuff. I mean. Uh, defense flew around, played with great effort. I mean, is, and, and played tough all the way to the end. I mean, our guys never quit. Not not a not a guy in the football team. We had, you know, Ox, our uh, equipment guy, said he's never seen two broken face masks out of linebackers. We had two smushed face masks. It was a physical game, um, and uh, there was a lot of hitting going. Our kids played hard, played with a lot of passion, um, and that's that's what you like. What are you seeing in the video review on the run game? <laughs> Execution, missing blocks, not staying in our lane on zone plays, um, maybe going the wrong way. Uh, when I say that, you know, should be handing it off here and not handing it off there. I mean, some of those little things that, you know, you guys would not see because um, you don't know. You're just watching it saying, hey, they ran that way. And, you know, but, you know, there's some numbers issues, you know, that, that you run into if you don't go the right way. And those are some of the things we got to correct. And, uh, and then we got to knock some people off the ball. Those are what I see. And I see tailbacks not taking good pass too. I mean, there's a lot of things. It's it's not one guy. It's it's 11 guys all the time. Really, and that's a fact. Final questions for Coach, please. We've asked a lot of them, Brian. Depth. You both got one. All right. Well, you got for me. I'm sure yours is better. Well, we've asked a lot of depth chart questions. With a team coming in like Rice, that's not as big, strong, fast. As They're the bigger and faster than you want them to be, and you think they are. To be honest with you, but. As you know, it's not an ACC game. Might you, you see trying to get more guys involved this week than you have in the past? Or? Yeah, that's, that was we tried to do that against Youngstown. We wanted to do that against Youngstown. That's always nice to say. Uh, you know, this is you know this is not a one double A team coming in. This is a well coached, hungry football team that I see. They play with passion too. Um, they got high motors uh, on both sides of the ball. I, I think and and. Uh, we're not looking to play more guys. We're looking to play the guys that are executing properly in practice, play those guys, hope they go out on the field and execute in practice. And we do a great job as coaches getting them in position to make plays. 
and, uh, and play the guys that help us win a football game. That's all I'm worried about is a win. That's all we can be. I'm not worried about who gets in the game. You know, they'll get their opportunities on special teams if they're a backup and they, you know, and they execute on that team. Um, but, you know, not worried about who plays and how many play. Worried about, you know, the quality of how we play. Now, the, the old adage is if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have any. I'm just sort of curious. Uh, do you, would you like to find an identity at some point offensively, or is it just going to be a hey, – I, wanted, yeah, I think it's just Thursday. It's be like we wanted to find an identity, days. you know, back in camp when we announced that. And you thought, you know, you you know, you don't want to go through the two quarterback systems, kind of like we did, you know, uh, my first year with with Chad and Nathan, uh, until it kind of you know washed out. But uh, you know, we tried not to do that. But we're you know we're still to the same point right now. Is you know who's that guy going to be? And and um, that's just kind of the situation we're in right now, unfortunately.